My subject today is we've got to go on. We've got to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And this message today is about our journey, and let's go for it. Hebrews 6 and 1 says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Let us go on. Verse 12 says that you be not slothful, but followers of them through faith and patience inherit the promises. Matthew 14 and 22 through 23, Jesus winds up with a crowd as usual. He's uh, led 5,000 plus of women and children and uh, into a place and, and he's always looking after his children, taking care of his children. And so his personality, his attributes is these people are here to hear the gospel to see Jesus, but we've got to feed them. And they found some fish and some loaves and fed them. And then he sent his disciples on back to town. And they were in the ship in the midst of a storm with the waves and the vessel was very contrary to the winds and the storms. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus showed up. And Peter said, if that's you, he said, bid me to come over. And Jesus did exactly that. He bid him to come over, but uh, he he's like a lot of us, you know, he's looking and everything is well and everything is hunky-dory as long as Jesus has got him up. But when he lets him down, he's weary. He's uh, sinking. Have you ever been sinking before? Have you ever been to the place that you're just tired and worn out? don't know what to do. And Jesus always shows up if we're willing to listen to him and to hear what he has to say. They were waiting until they were hearing the words of Jesus. You're going to make it, Peter. You're going to come over. You're going to walk on the water. You're going to enter back into the ship, and you're going to be saved. And I think if anything that the Lord is saying to the church today, there is turmoil in the world. There's a lot of uh, things that are happening, wars and rumors of wars, and uh, politicians uh, on the trail today, and everything seems to be turned upside down. But Jesus is still available for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ today. As a church, we must go out reaching the community for Christ. We must continue with our goals of reaching out into the community. Uh, I don't know how many people in here today has been saved for a number of years, or how many has been saved just recently, it doesn't matter. You're in the boat, and stay in the boat, and let Jesus lead your life. Let Jesus direct you in the paths that you need to go. It's so easy to turn and see other people and say, well, they're making it better than I am. 
Who knows how good they're doing? We look at some people and say, well, they're really doing well. You don't know. We don't know. People are hurting. People want somebody to put an arm around them and tell them that Jesus loves them. Jesus cares about your needs and Jesus cares about your wants and your heartaches and your sorrows that you're going through. In Jeremiah 2 and 13, he says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me and for uh, the fountain of living water and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Substitutes. People like substitutes today. Something that is just maybe. Maybe God loves me. Maybe God wants to heal me. Maybe God wants to do a work in my life. But Jesus is available and he's wanting to help us and use us for his glory and for his honor. Living water requires us to remain in the flow of God's presence. Living water, knowing the word of God by studying the word, praying for our community and, and uh, see a continuation of what our nation was built upon. Our nation was built upon the word of God and the prayer of people uh, that love God, cisterns uh, require work that goes and gives no results. Jude speaks of this in chapter 1, uh, verses uh, 11 through 12. We must have a need to walk on water today. We don't have to walk on water today. But we do have issues with life that we need the help of Almighty God. So many people are hurting today. People without jobs. People that are hurting financially. People that are hurting physically. People that are hurting emotionally. And the church is a healing station. The body of Christ is healing for the souls of men and women, boys and girls. We're not a perfect bunch of people, never have claimed to be, never will be, but praise God, we're people that loves one another and loves the house of God, loves Jesus Christ, loves the return of Jesus Christ. We need to be together as never before. We do not need to uh, walk on water today, but we do need to know the issues that we're facing today. The issues that are plaguing our society today is abortion is really a big deal today. And I know that that happens in lots of families and a lot of wonderful families get caught into that, but let me tell you, we don't need to abort babies today. We need the hand of God to reach down and comfort the mother and the baby and all of them and pull them together. We need babies. Amen? We need babies in the house of God. We need babies in the United States of America. And we need to honor the babies that are born. Morality. Uh, I hear a lot of people saying, well, I do what I want to do and how I want to do it and all of these other things. Yes, you can do that. And you can live a miserable life. But I want to tell you, you get a hold of the word of God and get Jesus Christ in your life and see that there's a moral God that loves you. He loves every one of us, big, little, tall, short, fat. He loves every one of us. It doesn't matter white, black, 
He loves every one of us. He doesn't uh, pick out and say, well, I like that person, or I like, and, and we're bad about doing that. We, we like to point out and say, well, they're real friendly to us, and because of that, it doesn't matter. We love the people of God, the children of God. You're welcome in the house of God. You're welcome to worship the Lord God. Somebody said, well, I don't worship the way that you do. I've never asked anybody to worship the way that I do. You worship God in spirit and in truth, and you will find the joy of the Lord. Amen? Understand that God is for us, and he's not against us. Amen. I don't know that about our government. <laughs> Nobody's ever offered me a million dollars. Nobody's ever offered me. I've worked every day of my life. I'm 77 years of age, and I've worked all of my life and plan to work until Jesus comes back. Amen. Uh, God has been good to us. He's blessed us. And he's blessed us with income. That's another issue. The economy is tough. Oh, I tell you, it... Uh, the grocery bill is going up. Anybody notice that? Uh, somebody was telling me this past week, said, I used to buy chicken for a certain amount, and said, it's twice or three times that much. Well, catch you a squirrel. And see how much you fuss about the chicken then. <laughs> economy is not good, but God's good. I was young, and now I'm older, and I've never, never, never saw the righteous forsaken. Never saw the righteous begging seed. If you live right, God will take care of you if he has to send somebody that you don't even like to take care of you. Amen? I know my God never fails. Health problems is another thing. I've been uh, a week ago, uh, two weeks ago, and I have real bad back problems now. And and uh, they put six shots up my spine, three on one side, three on the other side. Told me to come back in uh, two weeks. So I go back this next week, and if it's not better, they'll put six more in. And then if that doesn't work, they say, well, go by the funeral home, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm believing God for a miracle. Todd, Pastor Todd, I should say. Pastor Todd asked me several weeks ago, he said, Dad, I want you to preach one, one service one Sunday. I'm going to be gone. And I said, well, who's going to preach the other one? He said, uh, uh, 
I'll, I'll figure it out. I said, I can preach both of them. He said, Dad, you just barely can't stand up. I said, it doesn't matter. God has been so good. I'm here to worship him and to praise him and to magnify him. Where's God at in all of this? Jeremiah 33 and 3, he said, call upon me. And I will answer. He's not going to send some substitute. He said, I will answer. He said, if you'll call upon me, I will answer. You don't need another God. You don't need a new car to find God. You don't need a new bicycle. You don't need a new house. But we need God. Everybody in this house needs God. Our nation would not be all torn to apart hatred and bitterness and division. Don't like this person. Don't like that person. Don't like the color of this person or the color of that person. I want to tell you, we need to pray and ask God to forgive us and help us and bring us to a relationship with one another. We can't go to heaven if we don't like one another because there's going to be Chinese and I can't even speak it. There's going to be all types of people and we've got to make it into the pearly gates. Hallelujah. He said, call upon me. What have we got to do? We've got to stay focused. Stay focused. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not the preacher's righteousness or the pastor's righteousness, are you Sunday school teacher? No. His righteousness. He said, pray. All things. Whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that God is able to do that? Yes. Then we've got to keep the faith. Be strong in our faith. So many people today are so wishy-washy. I'm just, there's none in this church, but. <laughs> but the one that we go to occasionally. <laughs> wishy-washy. I tell you, if I feel bad, I'm still a Christian. If I'm broke, I'm still a Christian. If I'm driving an old vehicle that's not running real good, I'm still a Christian. If I got a new suit on, and I've got a new one on. I did a wedding for my grandson last week in Mississippi, and so new suit. But I could have wore that old one and still know that God loves me. He doesn't love me for the way that I look, the way that I dress, the way that I talk. He loves me because I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ and my sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't have to go to a priest. I don't have to go to a preacher. I went to Jesus Christ, and he's the one that saved me, and he was the one that washed me in the blood of Jesus Christ. We have to keep the faith. Hebrews 11, 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
the, evidence, uh, the evidence of things not seen. And then third, you've got to finish strong. You know, Betty and I have been married for 22 years. <laughs> really, 58. And we've seen good times and we've seen bad times. But never have I ever said and never has Betty ever said, well, I wish I didn't belong to that church. I wish I wasn't a part of that church. Has everything been perfect in this church? Somebody amen me. <laughs> no. Has everything been great in your home? I'm talking about your home with your husband and wife. No, but God is still good through bad times, through good times. He's still the Lord of everything. He's still the one that takes care of us. He's the one that woke me this morning. Aren't you glad that you're awake right now? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So, faith. And then we've got to finish strong. You know, Betty can tell you that one of my favorite characters in the Bible is Caleb. Caleb was 40 years of age and he just done a masterful job of helping him enter into the promised land. But then he got promised of something else. And uh, Moses spoke to him and he uh, followed some of his ways and he said, well, I want to know, I'm age 88 or 85 years old and I still believe God for miracles. It doesn't matter if you're a young person, teenager, believe God for miracles. Amen? If you're older, believe God for miracles. I was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. Amen? So, at 85 years of age, he said, give me this mountain. We're all faced with different things in life. But instead of saying, poor old me, I'm crippled or I'm hurting or I don't see as well as I used to or this or that or the other, you know, just go down the list. I want to tell you, call upon God and tell him how thankful you are that he has spared you to this day and let the power and the presence of God overshadow you every day of your life. You know, uh, we have to fight for what's right. We have to. If, it, if, if you don't fight for what's right, the devil will come in and cause confusion, try to take your life away from you. Uh, you know, they say that... Uh, New Year's resolutions, uh, they, they're always coming up with something new. Yesterday is history, but tomorrow is a mystery. We have been given this day, June the 25th of 2023, they say that 
if you make New Year's resolutions, and I've done that, and you've done it, and I've kept some of them, some of them I hadn't, losing weight. But they say that 75% of those are broken the first day. 75% of the New Year's resolutions are broken that day. We don't have to do that. You know, I'm, I'm very simple in the way that I believe. About 60 years ago, I went to an altar and asked God to save me and wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ. And you know, I woke up this morning, I was still saved. I see people in and out, up and down. I'm telling you, God wants you to be stable in the word of Almighty God. He loves you. He's not wanting to destroy you. He wants you to make it to the promised land. We can do it. Every person in this building, every child in this building, every person that is here today, we can make it by the grace of Almighty God. We can't make it because we're Church of God. We can't make it because we're Baptists. We can't make it because we're this, that, or the other. But we can make it because of the grace of Almighty God and the way that God has saved us and washed us in His precious blood. We can make it to the other side. New Year's resolutions. 75% of them never turn out. For me, it's 100%. Because I ask for a Cadillac every year. <laughs> and I still drive in a Toyota. <laughs> so, let me tell you, Keep your focus upon Jesus, not upon things. Things are going to pass away. Things will be good for a little while. You'll enjoy them. Get you a new house and you'll enjoy it. Get you a new car and you'll enjoy it. But there's nothing like the newness of heaven when we step in the presence of Almighty God. Do you love him today? I'm ready to go on. I'm going to make it. Anybody in here going to make it? Hallelujah. Anybody here ready to see Jesus when he returns? I don't want to go by the way of the grave. I'll be honest with you. I've told Joe Crumley, I said, I don't want you messing with me. <laughs> I don't want that. I want to be raptured. Trudy does too. <laughs> God is good. We can make it. We are making it. We are making it. Somebody said, well, I slipped and done this. Let me tell you, the same God that saved you is able to keep you. And if you make a mistake, you can say, God, Forgive me. And he's there to forgive you. He's not over there to try to make you not make it. He's wanting his children to be home with him. Praise God.